Okay. Okay. Hi everyone, and uh, thank you all for being here, and thanks again for the invitation. My name is Ludovico Boyart, and I'm an assistant professor at the University of Cagliari. And today I will present, I will be presenting you a joint work with uh, Gianni Feno and Mirko Madras, which is entitled Interplay between Upsampling and Regularization for Provider Fairness in Recommended Systems. Um, this uh, presentation is uh, based on uh, a uh, user modeling and user adapted interaction paper that was published last year. Here, via this uh, QR code, you can access the preprint in case you're interested in reading the, the full paper. So, let's start with a bit uh, of uh, motivation behind our work. As most of you know, uh, recommended systems are usually. Um, usually provide a personalized ranking of the items and for a lot of time the goal has been to maximize the effectiveness for the users but uh, behind the recommended systems there are multiple stakeholders stakeholders here uh, i provided you with a very simple example we might have for example one of the stakeholders could be the platform for example spotify where there might be content providers so the artists for example behind the songs and then the content consumers who are the users who actually receive the recommendation so why paying attention to uh, these stakeholders um, because if we do not care for certain categories of users, we might have undesired effects such as the discrimination uh, for both the users and the providers that belong to legally protected groups, for example, those of a specific gender or ethnicity. In this work, we, we specifically focus on the providers because there are also studies that have shown that um, uh, there are categories of providers that are under-recommended by recommended systems. I guess there was also, there was also a Spotify study showing this. So um, uncovering and mitigating discrimination for, provi for minority providers is a crucial problem because uh, if these providers leave the platform, we will be, we will be left with no content or, or with a reduced amount of content. So in the current literature, basically um, what it is usually done is to give a certain exposure or attention to provider based on what's their relevance or contribution in the catalog. In our work, we use this notion of uh, uh, contribution to the catalog to regulate three properties. The first of them is the relevance, the second of them is the visibility, and then the exposure of the group of providers. So we try to go um, uh, beyond what is usually done in the literature, and we follow a, a distributive norm that is based on equity. So sticking to the uh, music world, if we have like uh, female artists and we have that uh, female singers, for example, contribute to 30% of the catalog, what we do is to try to ensure that um, in the, the, the female providers are given 30% of the relevance, 30% of the visibility, and 30% of the exposure. In a bit, I will delve more into uh, what we mean exactly with relevance, visibility, and exposure. Um, in specifically, in our work, we uh, have an intervention on the relevance that is given to the item by a given user in order to address provider fairness. Why our first goal is to make an intervention on the predicted relevance? Because usually a ranking is based on uh, the relevance scores that are predicted by a model. So what we thought is that relevance is actually a very important algorithmic asset asset that uh, we should not uh, only um, consider for the individual users, but they should be allocated to the provider group, to the provider groups. So we want to make sure that an appropriate relevance is given to the minority provider groups. And the question we ask uh, we asked ourselves in this study is, um, if we regulate the user item relevance for the minority groups, 
can we also make sure that uh, uh, providers get a better visibility and exposure? So um, uh, leading us to fairer recommendations. Um, one problem that uh, we had uh, when that we had to face when uh, when dealing with this problem is that usually um, there is a one-to-one -one association between the items and the providers. This is uh, mostly because uh, usually in uh, these fairness problems have been uh, uh, dealt in non-personalized ranking and especially people ranking where the item and, and the provider coincide. So this one-to-one -one mapping seemed natural. But in the uh, item recommendation domain, there exists a multi, a many, a many to many association between user and items. It is not uh, a case that in my previous example, I put this uh, song that has two uh, providers behind it, which are Beyonce and Nicki Minaj, because uh, usually an, an item can be produced by multiple providers and a provider can produce multiple items. So we have this many to many association and we wanted to account for this type of association in our work. So we tried to assess fairness in this more general framework. So um, one other issue that we faced is that usually uh, disparate exposure is uh, mitigated via uh, re-ranking. But since we're dealing with, uh, with relevant scores, uh, it is known that uh, um, when you try to predict a relevant score by a machine learning model, this is likely to be biased. This, this might be due to several reasons, such as how popular is the item, how this item is, pre is presented, and unfairness that might be associated to both the users and the providers. So um, we need to instill a uh, find the shared of relevance across the groups. And this is one of the goals of our work. So let me show you why um, this intuition might work before I dive into, uh, into our work. Basically, if we consider a very popular data set that is movie less than M, and we consider as providers the movie director, the minority group in this setting would be the female directors. And these female directors are associated to 6% uh, of the items in the catalog. When we run uh, state-of-the-art models such as BPR, we end up that uh, um, the uh, female providers are associated with 3.9 interactions. So this, uh, the, the users interact with these items less than uh, what the female providers have to offer. And the predicted relevance is 2.9%. And um, there is a 2.8% exposure, uh, exposure that is associated to female providers. So what we asked ourselves is, what if we try to take action in this first point and we try to upsample the interactions to try to reduce the disparities in terms of relevance and exposure. So what we did in this preliminary example is to do an upsampling to try to bring also the interactions associated to female providers to 6%. What you can see is that we can see a bit of an improvement, but still we things are not as good as they should be. So we get to a 4.5, 5.4, sorry, uh, item relevance and to a 5.4% uh, exposure. So another step that is part of our approach is to uh, try to regularize the share of relevance during the learning process. And we can see that, th that things indeed do get better. Indeed, we almost get to a relevance and an exposure that are very close to our target. So we are able to kind of Making make things better for the female providers. So uh, these are a bit of the ingredients behind our work. So a mix between an upsampling and a regularization of the relevancies. So 
In this work, what we first do is to try to characterize disparities in terms of relevance, visibility, and exposure against the minority uh, group of providers, considering synthetic data. Why synthetic data? Because we wanted to consider different conditions and different representations of the groups in the catalog and the interactions. And then, uh, based on these disparities, we present a mitigation approach that uh, is based on an upsampling, which is a form of preprocessing, and a regularization term that, uh, via an in-processing approach, uh, is integrated into the original optimization function. Then we evaluate the impact of our approach on two real world data set and considering very small minority groups. So let me start a bit with some concepts and definition. Here you will see a bit of formula, but hopefully they are paired with some uh, examples so things will not be as challenging as they look. But in case you lose me, feel free to stop. So as usual, we consider a set of users, a set of items, and for each item, we have a set of providers that we indicate with PI. And of course, um, each item has um, at least one provider. And then each provider offers a subset of items that we denote with IP. Moreover, each provider is also associated with uh, N discrete sensitive attributes. So we have like uh, a set of sensitive attributes that, are, that is associated uh, to a user and each attribute uh, might have uh, different, different values. So for example, if uh, attribute AJ is the gender, uh, we might have uh, um, a value that encodes the different genders. So for example, zero for female, one for male, and different values in case we are considering non-binary genders. Um, the interactions can take different forms. We might have uh, like a unit interaction. So we consider a pair where the user has interacted with an item, or we might consider triplets in the form of user, item, and value, where the value is usually the rating that is associated, uh, that is given by the user to the item. And each user and each item are represented as a decides vector from a user vector and an item vector matrix. So what we try to do is uh, to try to um, learn a function f that predicts the missing rating, the missing, um, not the missing rating, the, the relevance that uh, an item might have for a user. And specifically in this study, we consider a recommendation cutoff, uh, which is a, a value k equal to 10. As I said in my uh, introduction, um, basically we decided to consider the fact that uh, an item might have multiple providers. So this is reflected in our representation of the sensible, of the sensitive attributes behind an item. So given an item E and an attribute A, we uh, build a vector, which is uh, SIA, that in each element has the number of providers associated with attribute A. So sticking with our uh, Beyonce and Nicki Minaj example, if our um, sensitive attribute is the gender, our vector would be um, uh, would have as elements two and zero, indicating that in this item we have two female providers and zero male providers. Then we consider uh, two forms of representation. The first of them is uh, the representation in the catalog. So basically for each item, we account for how many providers of, um, uh, of a given attribute are, uh, are there in the catalog. Then we consider also a representation that is based on the amount of interactions. So here we consider the, the uh, matrix M that uh, uh, cons considers all the interactions between the users and the item, and we do a similar job. So for each interaction between the user and an item, we account for um, how many uh, providers of the minority group appear um, 
in, in uh, each item. I see a raised hand, let me finish with the last point and then uh, you can open the, Microsoft and the microphone. And then um, given these two representations, we consider as minority group, the group having the lowest representation in the catalog. Um, so I see there was a raised hand, please feel free to open your microphone and ask the question if you want. Yeah, I, I'm sorry if I didn't understand correctly. Um, for the first one, when you do provide a group representation in the catalog, um, isn't SIA a vector, not a single value? Or did I misunderstand? Um, no, the vector is, the node, is this one. So mm -hmm. if we have a like in between parentheses the A, we have the, basically this would be the element of the vector associated with the, uh, with the, the um, the, the attribute A. I understand. Thank you. <laughs> you. Okay. So now we know who is our minority group, and uh, given this minority group, we can consider the uh, two forms, uh, three forms of disparity actually: a disparity in relevance, a disparity in visibility, and a disparity in, ex in exposure. I've put the formula for completeness, but hopefully the summary on top will be much more accessible. So the disparity in relevance delta R is uh, the absolute difference between the representation in the catalog, which we have seen later is the uh, C A mean, the, where A mean is the minority group, and the percentage of relevance for the minority group. So for each predicted relevance score in the uh, top, top K, uh, we consider how many um, providers of the minority group are there. And we assess what's the difference between this predicted relevance and the representation of the group in a catalog. For disparate visibility, what we do is we simply um, account for the percentage of providers in the of the minority group in the recommended items. So without looking at the position in which these providers are recommended, we simply count for, uh, we simply account for the difference between the amount of providers of the minority group that are recommended and what we expect in terms of representation in the catalog. The final form of, di of disparity is uh, disparate exposure, where we also account for the position in which these items appear. This is like the standard, the standard formulation for exposure, where we basically, as soon uh, um, uh, when we go down in the recommendation list, uh, so as the position increases, we have um, a loss in terms of exposure, which is uh, which decreases logarithmically. So here we have an absolute difference between the representation in the catalog and the positions in which the items of the minority group appear. So um, given these three forms of disparities, we try to assess how the state-of-the-art models behaved, uh, the state-of-the-art state of the art models behaved. And we considered uh, pairwise optimization, which is uh, basically uh, BPR, where we provide the training data, which are triplets in the form U, I, J, where U is the user, I is an item the user interacted with, so a so-called positive item, and J is a negative item, so an, an item the user has not interacted with. What the classic uh, objective function does is to try to maximize the difference between the item, the relevance uh, for the item a user in, in, has interacted with and the relevance for the user, the item, sorry, for the item the user has not interacted with. Um, here are a bit of details and for training we picked 70% of the interactions 10% was used for validation and 20 for testing. In this uh, um, starting example, uh, we uh, mm, did some observation on synthetic data sets. Uh, these synthetic data sets that we created uh, at the moment are associated to only one provider. And, only one provider. and uh, um, we will see examples where each item is associated to 
more than one provider in the real world uh, data sets. And each provider is associated with one binary sensitive attribute. And we considered two types of imbalances. The first of them is catalog imbalance. So basically in the synthetic data sets that we created, we had significantly few, fewer female or male providers that offer items. And we also created data sets where the, there was an observation imbalance. So uh, users rated significantly less items associated with female or male providers, for example, due to feedback loop. This led us to 15 data sets, which you see here, and you see here in orange the uh, representation in the catalog associated with the minority group for uh, each data set. In light blue, you see the uh, amount of uh, uh, interactions with the items of the minority group, and in dark blue, you see the difference between these two representations. So the, you can see that uh, in the data sets, we, uh, we have created uh, different uh, scenarios so as to actually take a picture of what is going on with the state of the art models. What uh, you can see here is um, in each um, uh, cell, you can see basically um, what happens in terms of relevance for the minority group in each of the 15 data sets. So here you can see the representation in the catalog for the minority group, so between 0 0.1 uh, 0 .1 and 0 0.5. And here you can see the, um, the interactions that the users had with the minority catalog. You can see that more or less, if you look at the columns, the relevance uh, by column is more or less the same. But one interesting phenomenon is that when there is an important gap between the uh, amount, the, the representation of the minority group in the catalog and the um, amount of interaction, the, actually, this, the actual disparity in relevance is higher. So here, for example, you can see that we have a 0 0.5, uh, so 50% of the interaction, but the minority group is very poorly represented in the data set, and we have a disparity in terms of relevance, which is the highest. So this led us to our first observation that is basically that the percentage of relevance for the minority depends on the difference between the contribution and the interaction representation. The larger this difference is, the larger the disparate relevance is. And this is also reflected in the visibility and exposure um, when we consider the top K. You can see that the disparate visibility is maximum when we have a strong gap between the amount, the representation in the catalog and the amount of interactions. And this uh, disparate visibility decreases as soon as uh, things get more balanced. And the same goes for disparate exposure. So in, the, in context where we have these strong imbalances, there is a large disparate visibility or exposure against the minority group based on the contribution in the catalog. The higher the disparate relevance is, the higher is the disparate visibility and exposure. So this led us to an intuition for our mitigation, which is to act on both the amount of interactions associated with the minority group and on the distribution of the relevance score. And so we tried to reduce disparities via upsampling the interactions and by regularizing the relevance scores. So, so far, what we have observed is that uh, the share of relevance uh, depends on the representation of the provider's group in the catalog and the interactions. So if these two representations are similar, then the, there is a lower disparity in relevance. But as we will see in the real world data sets, this scenario where we have a similarity between, between these two representations is unlikely to occur. 
So uh, this might be due again to uh, presentation bias, preferences, user interfaces, and so on. So we need an approach to mitigate these disparities. So our two strategies, as I was mentioning, are um, based on an upsampling of the interaction so that we could balance the uh, catalog interaction representation and a regularization to account for the distribution of the relevance across groups. The first approach, which is the upsampling on the amount of interactions, uh, was uh, done via three forms of um, setups that allowed us to interact, to select the items to the user item pairs to upsample. The first of them is called real and uh, upsamples existing user item interactions with repetitions and the um, item, the interaction to upsample was uh, based on the contribution of the minority group in the item. The second of them is called uh, fake upsampling, which is a random upsampling with no repetition. And uh, um, to select the item for which we do the upsampling, we look again at the uh, contribution of the minority group in the item. So, the higher is the contribution of the minority group in the item, the higher is the probability that this item will be selected. And then we pick a user at uh, random. Then we have a third strategy, which is called fake by pop, which is again, um, performs an upsampling of the sy synthetic interactions. But instead of looking at the items based on the contribution of the minority group, we look at the popularity of the item, again with no repetition. Once we select the item based on a probability that's based on popularity, the user is, cho is chosen randomly. And we do an upsampling until the representation in terms of interactions meets the target percentage that we have. Then for our regularization, we basically uh, feed our model with uh, batches of training samples, which we denote as T-batch, which is built from the upsample interactions. And then we built a loss function, which is, as you can see, a mix between the original uh, accuracy loss and the uh, irregularization term, which is uh, something we introduced in this work and I'm about to present. So this uh, regularization reg minimizes the disparate uh, relevance. So as you can see, the two terms are regulated by a factor and according to the weight you give these two these, to these two factors, you give a model more importance to the accuracy or more importance to the regularization. Concretely, this uh, regularization regs, reg computes in percentage, in percentage the relevance received by the minority group in the catalog, and it is balanced with the contribution of the minority group in the catalog. So what we try to do is uh, for each uh, um, uh, uh, training sample in the batch, we try to make sure that the difference between the predicted relevance and, of course, the representation of the minority group and um, the um, representation in the catalog are kind of uh, minimized. So let's see how these two approaches work, if both of them are necessary or not, and um, um, basically how uh, our approach behaves uh, in with the real world data sets. Um, we considered four research questions and the first of them is focusing only on the upsampling. So we asked ourselves how much we should upsample the minority group interactions in order to improve the trade-off between the recommendation utilities the recommendation utility and the disparities that we observed. The second question is uh, um, to what extent uh, the upsampling and the regularization impact the trade-off we have between the utility and the disparities, uh, 
support at the individual level, so upsampling and individualization alone or jointly, so considering the two of them one after the other. The third research question is uh, um, the impact that we have for the minority groups and how these, uh, how our approach impacts on internal mechanisms of the model. And the final research question uh, accounts for uh, uh, the impact in terms of disparity, utility and coverage compares with, compared with other state-of-the-art models. And if, our, if the state-of-the-art models can benefit from from our regularized relevancies. The two data sets are uh, moving and STNM, as I was mentioning earlier, where we considered only the ratings that had a value equal or higher than three. And so these were considered as positive interaction while the rest are zero. And our providers are the movie directors. As probably most of you know, the movie directors are not part of the original movie list and data set, so this data set was enriched and this uh, information was collected via the TMDB API. The second data set that we considered is uh, COCO, which is a data set associated with uh, 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 learners interacting with the online courses. And uh, um, in, in other studies, we have shown that uh, most of the ratings uh, in uh, this data set are uh, basically five. So if a user interacts with the course, uh, that user is likely to give the maximum score. So we consider the ratings equal to five uh, uh, as positive interactions, while the rest are zero. The providers in this context are the course instructor, instructors and unfortunately we did not have the um, gender information available and this was inferred with the gender API so keeping the confidence higher than 75 percent. I know this is not the perfect approach but unfortunately the amount of data set that is available is very limited. In terms of personalization, we evaluated the metric with a classic uh, NDCG score, which nowadays is kind of the state of the art metrics to uh, account for um, uh, the effectiveness of uh, a recommendation. And uh, um, we also, as I was mentioning earlier, considered the item coverage and we considered the whole set of items uh, or just the items that are produced by the majority group and the coverage for the items that are produced by the majority group. And uh, for our experimental setting, uh, uh, as you probably remember, we had three forms of upsampling plus our regularization. So we tested all this setting. The first of them is a baseline where we basically have the state of the art model without any upsampling and any regularization. Then we consider just the three upsampling strategies, so real, fake, and fake by pop. Then the regularization alone without the upsampling. And then we combined the upsampling strategies with the regularization. So, for example, we had the first, the real upsampling followed by the regularization, the fake upsampling followed by the regularization, and so on. So, in this uh, uh, first research question, we wanted to ask ourselves what's the impact of the upsampling on the um, recommendation effectiveness and on the disparities. Here in this figure, you will see only the NDCG and the disparate exposure for the sake of simplicity. But what I can tell you is that in terms of disparate relevance and disparate visibility, you could see similar patterns. So let's try to see uh, what happened. Basically, in each line, we have one data set, so either COCO or Mobile and STEM, and in each column, we have one of the upsampling strategies, so real, fake, and fake by pop. So what we can observe is that the more we increase the amount of upsampling, the more we lose in NDCG. This is very clear, for example, here or here, 
And uh, um, we can also see that fake is the strategy that is gets affected the most by the amount of upsampling. So the more we create, uh, we upsample with fake interactions, the more we lose in terms of NTCG. And then we can also see that the more we upsample, and this is very clear, for example, from this figure, the, uh, the, um, the more we uh, reduce the uh, uh, disparate exposure for um, the minority group. And what we did is to select the values in the dashed lines, which are the ones that, we do, that have the lowest gap between the um, the lowest gap between uh, the the the, the loss in DCG and uh, disparate exposure. So this led us to a, a, a third observation, which is that the upsampling of the minority group interactions reduced disparate impacts. And so the inequality in terms of exposure, visibility, and relevance with respect to the contribution of the minority group in the catalog. The loss in recommendation utility is very small or even absent in some cases and that the amount of needed upsampling depends on the data set and the upsampling technique. So now that uh, we have basically selected a value for each configuration, let me go a bit uh, into uh, detail with respect to what happens with uh, the different uh, uh, methods. So here you can see we have NDCG, disparate relevance, disparate visibility, disparate exposure, the, the coverage for all the items for the minority group and for the majority group. And uh, what we can see is that uh, um, real is the, the strategies, the strategy that allows to reduce the disparities um, in the best way, basically. We have uh, for real the best disparate relevance, the lowest disparate relevance, visibility and exposure, and the best coverage, at least for the um, or set of items and for the minority group. And NDCG is also slightly improved. An interesting phenomenon, we, phenomenon which probably will not surprise those of you who have uh, worked on popularity bias is that if we interact, if we um, add uh, interactions that are uh, associated with the popularity of the items, we are able to increase the NDCG the most. So basically we are able to making the users happy because we are basically feeding the model with more popular items. Um, an interesting uh, phenomenon is also that with moving and stand up, moving and stand up is also the one uh, more affected by the loss of NDCG when, uh, with respect to Coco when we add um, uh, upsampled interactions. So, as upsampling real existing interactions that involve the minority group can make it possible to achieve a good trade-off between recommendation utility, disparate impacts, and coverage. And when we upsample the minority group interaction with fake user item interaction is very good when the minority group is very small. This table looks uh, huge, but hopefully uh, uh, it, things are uh, easier than uh, they, they look. So basically here in this second research question, we have, uh, we analyze the combination of the combined treatment. So here you can see the regularization alone, uh, the real upsampling plus the regularization and so on for the two data sets. An interesting phenomenon is that the regularization alone, as you can see, does not help us to uh, mitigate the disparity in a better way than what the upsampling does. And uh, what happens is that indeed we, we need a combination of both an upsampling and a, regulari a regularization to make things better. And an interesting phenomenon is that uh, uh, fake plus reg is the approach that allows to uh, reduce the disparities uh, in terms of relevance and visibility the most, while fake by pop followed by the regularization is the one 
uh, that allows to achieve the best NDCG and the um, best disparate exposure and the coverage. So if uh, what, what take home message we can get for, from this uh, second research question is that if we combine a regularization and an upsampling, this is crucial to fine tune the trade off between um, uh, the different metrics uh, with respect to considering an upsampling alone, especially when uh, the upsampled user interaction, user market interactions are fake ones. Then we considered in our third research question what happens to the minority group and to our uh, internal mechanisms. So here in the baseline, you can see how the um, original model uh, sampled the positive and negative interactions for the minority group. You can see that the minority group was basically uh, much more present in the negative interaction than it was in the positive interactions. With uh, uh, an upsampling alone, we are able to, um, oh, sorry. We are able to um, uh, include uh, via the upsampling much more positive interactions for the minority group. And the, uh, this is also true. Uh, and the disparity is also that this difference gets also slightly lower, if I'm not mistaken, for uh, the fake plus reg. And this, as you can see, has a positive effect also on in cascade, also on the other uh, mechanism, mechanisms, because you can see that we have much more uh, triplets associated with the minority group. And uh, we can see that we have a higher relevance for the minority group, a higher visibility, and a higher exposure. So indeed, we are helping the minority group thanks to our regularization and to uh, sorry to our upsampling and to our regularization. The last research question was uh, the one that basically compared our approach against the state of the art. And we compared ourselves with three baselines. The first of them is FAR, which is an approach that was produced by Liu and colleagues at Rex in 2019, which is a, a re-ranking that combines a personalization induced term and a fairness induced term. The second of them is FAIR by uh, Zelike and colleagues that uh, um, is also a re-ranking that maximizes the utility uh, and it also ensures that the proportion of minority item in every prefix of the top K remains statistically above or indistinguishable from a given minimum. The final one is FEDEC, which was proposed by Patrick and colleagues at TabTabTab and is a fairness criterion that tries to maximize utility and consumer fairness and tries to guarantee a uniform exposure uh, distribution across providers. So let's see, uh, there is also another table, but I, th I thought it was uh, too much information. So here I wanted to show you just uh, how our approach of combining upsampling and regularization behaves with respect to the state of the art models. And we can see that VR plus reg is actually the best approach, uh, both in terms of NDCG, of disparate relevance, disparate visibility, and discrete exposure. But an interesting phenomenon is that uh, fair reg can um, achieve a better coverage. So, a uh, final observation is that uh, if we upsample the minority items and we regularize the elements, uh, we can have a higher recommendation of utility and lower disparities compared to the treatments at the state of the art, regardless of the data set. But this benefit does not mean that we are able to have a higher catalog coverage in terms of recommended items. So let me go into the conclusions. Into, in uh, this work, we basically assessed to what, to what extent the state-of-the-art recommended systems emphasize disparity in terms of uh, predicted relevance, visibility, and exposure. 
and we tried to reduce the um, these disparities with a mitigation that combines an upsampling of the interactions and a regularization on the share of the relevance across the provider groups. We uh, analyzed the relevance score and the uh, recommendation list on both synthetic data sets and real world data sets. And what uh, we could observe on the synthetic data, set, data sets is that the original models create disparities between the relevance given to provided groups and their contribution in the, in the catalog. So what we did is to try to act on this relevance score. And um, we, with our treatment, we could reduce the disparities in terms of relevance, visibility, and exposure without affecting the utility. In future work, we are uh, trying to go into different directions. We would like to explore furthermore the connection between relevance, visibility, and exposure. We would like to have mitigation uh, methods uh, which act as, as a sort of temporal approach, so trying to apply this type of mitigation at different stages to see what uh, impact we have. And we also want to investigate the relationship between, between the recommendations that are returned by an algorithm and the tendency of each user to prefer items that belong to different groups of providers. And we also would like to devise other treatments that link the internal parameters to the ranking matrix. So this concludes my talk and I'll be happy to take your questions. Thank you so much. That was a really, really interesting talk. Uh, I guess I open the floor to other people as always before I start asking my question. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for the applause. I just see it. Uh, uh, there is a question from Andres, I guess. Hi. Um, thanks. Hi. Thanks for the presentation. Um, I, I don't know if I, if I can uh, formulate this uh, clearly, but um, so do you, but um, I'm thinking that you basically use the, um, um, the representation in the catalog as, as part of the the way to um, to see if there is like the, this fairness in the repre in the re representation or, or how much is uh, yes. recommended. So my, my question is if you also like in a real situation maybe you know maybe there is a bias in the catalog that you don't know how much is closer to the reality like maybe there is um like i'm thinking for example in the movie in the movie lens data set there is i, I don't remember if i think you mentioned it but like how do you know this is actually mm -hmm. true in reality or, or there is like a bias there that it's not really um this is a closer, very yeah. point uh, yes um so um, basically there are uh, also the studies that I did, but it also uh, the authors did uh, that uh, consider the representation based on the amount of interaction. So this is the uh, interactions. This is a choice. Um, the, the, the problem is that, uh, unfortunately, every sampling is biased. Also, if we consider the interaction based, uh, uh, sorry, a, a representation based on the amount of interactions, also, the same thing that was done by Mobilance uh, in, in the recommender systems in the recommender system was biased because uh, it is known that, for example, part of the ratings that we see in the Mobilance data set are associated with the recommendations that were provided with the users. So basically, the users got recommended these items and then they rate these items. So everything is biased, and unfortunately, there's no perfect choice you can make. Uh, what I would say is that uh, it is a design choice, and uh, in this work we said, okay, what's uh, less biased? Uh, the, um, the the percentage of items produced by the minority group or the uh, the interaction between the users and the items? And so we opted for this form of representation. But as I said, other studies have considered representation based on interactions and. Uh, 
this is also a, a possibility, but uh, I would say there is no no better or worse uh, choice in Putin data is biased and we need to deal with it. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, uh, my question was about the negative sampling that you performed. So I thought it was really interesting that you noticed that more of the minority groups were being kind of put in the negative sampling. Um, so were you using just like uh, uniform randomized negative sampling or how were you defining your negative sampling technique? Um, uh, the, the negative word that you see in, in this plot is that uh, they are the negative items uh, in the triplets that were, we were feeding uh, the recommendation model with. So uh, if you remember, there is uh, in, in the, the model takes as input a user, an item the user interacted with, and a negative item, which is an item the user has not interacted with. What we could observe is that in the original sampling, which is a, a, um, a sampling that is not a negative sampling, it's like a sampling, mm, a random sampling done by the, the, the original uh, model, the um, items associated with female providers, so with the minority group, were uh, appearing much more in the negative items than in the positive items. So basically what the, the model was learning is that um, female items are worse to recommend than male items, and so this uh, kind of pushed the recommendation of male providers, uh, creating these imbalances. 